Code editor is where you spend most of your time as a developer, therefore you need to make sure it is properly set up and is visually appealing to make you as efficient as possible. That's why in this video I'm gonna show you my VS Code setup which I've been using in my day-to-day -day work as a full-time developer. I'll share with you the top 20 extensions as well as themes and icons that I use to enhance the appearance and the most commonly used shortcuts. And I'm confident that you will discover at least one new cool extension in this video. If you don't have the VS Code installed yet, head over to code.visualstudio.com and download the suggested version here. Once you download and install it, it will initially look like this and we need to change it because it's very ugly at the beginning. On the left side you have the navigation tabs. The first tab is Explorer which is for browsing through your project files here. The second tab is for searching for specific code lines within the project. The third type is for source control and allows you to compare differences in your files before committing the changes. Next we have the debugger which is for debugging your code and watching for variables at runtime. And finally we have the extensions tab which we will explore in more detail now. If you go to the extensions tab you'll see that I already have uh, several extensions installed here. The way you install the extensions is by searching for their name. And once you find it, you click on install and make sure to enable it if it is disabled by default. So let's go through the most useful extensions that I use daily. The first one is auto close tag. This extension automatically adds the closing HTML tags. For example, if I want to add an H1 tag, once I write the opening H1 tag and close it, it will automatically add the closing tag of it, which is very convenient compared to you adding the closing tags every time. The next one is auto import. This extension automatically finds and imports the TypeScript modules and there is the same for JavaScript modules as well. For example, let's say this component was not imported initially. Let's remove it from here. Then we will get an error indicating that it is not imported. But if I type the name of that component, you see it starts suggesting to import this. In this case, we have three places where the component is exported from and I will choose this one for example and it will automatically import this component from here. Next extension is auto rename tag. This extension automatically renames the tags. For example, if I want to rename this to be a paragraph here, I can just rename the opening tab and you see it automatically renames the closing tag with it. Next we have the code spell checker. This is for checking grammar of your variable and function names. If you set a grammatically incorrect name to your variable, this extension will detect it and will suggest renaming it properly. Next we have the dot env here. This extension highlights the syntax of environment variable files. Without this, it will usually look all white in the syntax. But if you install this, you will see it starts highlighting the syntax. And it can also help you catch typos in your environment files. I recommend also installing the Docker extension if you're working with containerized applications. After you install and enable this, you will see the Docker icon on the navbar. And this makes it easy to build and deploy dockerized applications from VS Code. The next one is ESLint. This extension integrates ESLint into Visual Studio Code and it statically analyzes your code to quickly find problems and suggest solutions for them. Then we have the Figma extension, which is again very useful. If you download and enable this, you will have a Figma tab in your navbar. So if you're working with Figma files, you can directly embed them here and then you can view the Figma design here without opening a separate Figma application or tab in your browser. I also use GitHub Copilot and Copilot Chat. If we enable both of these, you will see another tab in the navbar. So Copilot makes code suggestions as you type and the Copilot Chat adds this tab here where you can chat directly with ChatGBT without leaving the code editor. Then we have the GraphQL extension. And as you can see, it is a couple of extensions, not one, which are helpful if you work with GraphQL APIs, but you need to install only this one from them, and then it will automatically install the utility ones with it. Then we have the import cost extension. This one detects and displays the size of imported packages. For example, if you have a bunch of imports in one page, this can help you catch the packages that are very big, and it will highlight the size of it on the right side. So maybe you can consider installing a lighter package or consider the alternatives to it. Then we have the indenticator package. This is just visually highlighting the current indent tab of your code. For example, if you have a lot of indentations, first of all that's not a good sign, you should refactor it. But anyways, it will help you find where you are currently in your code and it will highlight the indented level of your cursor. 
Next, we have the Live Server extension. This is very useful and it enables you to launch a live server, for example, from an HTML file, and it automatically reloads the UI as you make modifications there. Then we have the Live Share extension, which is for collaboration. If you enable this, another tab will be added here. So this is if you want to work on a feature or bug with someone else. In that case, one of you can share their code editor and the other person will be able to see the cursor and both of them can write code on the same editor. Next, we have the Markdown Preview extension. This gives you a live preview of how your Markdown file looks like. Let's say you're writing a readme file documenting a repo. This will open the preview of that on the right side so you can see changes real time. The next very useful extension is the Notes. If you download and enable it, you will see another tab added here. So it adds this Notes tab on the left where you can write notes. For example, you can store here how to build a project or common bugs that you encounter or any useful things you want to keep in handy, you can store them here. The last extension before we will move on to the themes is Prettier. This is an awesome tool that automatically formats your code. Without this, you have to manually ensure the indentation and spacings of your code and it can become very inconsistent if you're working on a project with a team. So this is a very useful extension that can be used by all of the members of the team. Now let's also make this window more visually appealing. For that you need to install the material theme for the themes and material icon theme for the icons. I tried a bunch of themes and I find the material theme to be the best and also very minimalistic. After installing both of them, go to one of your project files to see the theme changes on it and now when you're here, click Command Shift P or if you're on Windows, Control Shift P and search for theme here. Find the one that says Preferences Color Theme and hit Enter. Here you see the themes that you can select from. On the top we have the light themes, which nobody uses. Then on the bottom we have the dark themes and you see the default is dark plus default dark. So you can move between these themes with arrows up and down and it will change how the theme looks like. This mainly changes how the code colors look like and the window color. And those ones that start with material theme are the ones that we installed with the extension. For each of the material themes, you can see there is a material theme and there is material theme high contrast. So high contrast just adds those separator lines here where without it you don't have it. I find the high contrast useful because then I can drag and expand this very easily. And I have three preferred themes from here. The first one is Material Theme High Contrast, the default one. Then the Material Theme Darker High Contrast. And also the last one, Material Theme Pale Night High Contrast. So now if you do Command Shift P again and search for Accent Color, select this one, Material Theme Set Accent Color. Here you can set the accent color, for example if I set it to light, it is usually this color that highlights where you are currently. For example if you go into files and select one of them, it will be in this accent color. And I like to set it to bright teal. But you can look at the other options here and choose the one that you like. And finally we can change the icons here on the left. By default you get those icons. For example JavaScript icons look like this or Dockerfile looks like this and so on. If you go back to the extensions and find the material icon theme and enable it, now you can go back and here is how the new icons look like. This instantly looks better than the default one. And finally, let's learn some useful shortcuts. There are a lot of shortcuts that you can use with VS Code. I'll leave a full list of these in the description. But I think you don't need most of them and let's go through the ones that I use daily. So I am on Mac and in the shortcuts I use the command and on the Windows you will just use Control instead of Command. The first one is Command B which toggles on and off the Explorer. For example if you are on small screen and you want to have two files near each other, you can do Command B and now you can easily see both of the files side by side. The next one is Command P which is to search for a file within this project. For example, you can search for the button component here and hit enter and this will redirect you to the component. Next we have Command W which closes the file and you can use Command Shift T to open the recently closed file. You can also use Command Shift P to search for settings here. For example, how previously we searched for theme here. You can use the Command plus backtick to hide and show the terminal and command plus or minus to zoom in and out. And instead of clicking on this search every time to search for a file, you can do command shift F and it will open this search bar here. 
And another useful tip, if you want to search for a text not globally, but in a specific folder, let's say you want to search for a code within the components folder only, you can right click on it and click find in folder and then search for your keyword here. You can use Ctrl plus tab to navigate between your recently opened files. Another useful shortcut, let's say you want to rename this on press property everywhere, you can select the first of it and then do command D. This will select the next one and then do command D until you selected all of them and then you can make these changes everywhere. You can also easily reorder lines by hitting option and arrows to open bottom and this will reorder the lines between them. If you do the same but with shift, option shift and arrow down, this will copy the exact same line below it. You can use command backspace to remove the whole line or command left and right to move from start to the end of the line. And the same works for the option left and right. This just moves one word at a time. So these are the most common shortcuts that I use, but check out the full list if you want. Maybe you'll find some other useful shortcuts there. And there you have the VS Code setup that I use daily. Let me know if this was helpful. And if you use other cool extensions, let us know in the comments. See you next time.